What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting. So in this video, I wanted to go over one ETF, which is gonna represent a massive opportunity here moving forward because of everything that's going on. So I'm gonna break down exactly what the thesis is gonna be. I'm gonna break down the expense ratio, the holdings, the actual um, uh, PE ratios, price to book multiples, all of that is gonna be covered in this video on which ETF and some of the alternatives to also consider moving forward. So hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and the link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. If you're interested in joining us, feel free to check that out. There is a 16% annual discount available and you'll get access to our Discord channels and all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, and trade ideas, along with a lot of our private videos on Discord as well. So the ETF that we are going to be talking about today, which I do believe there is going to be an opportunity in moving forward, is going to be none other than XLF. That's going to be your select sector ETF in the finance sector. Yes, financial services. And despite what's going on with banks, I do believe there is going to be an opportunity with this ETF. And hear me out. The reason why I believe there is going to be potential here is because a lot of the sell-off that we are seeing is now considered to be fear driven, right? Because of the fact that over the weekend, the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve and the FDIC have stepped in. A lot of that trust has been restored. And if I go over Bill Ackman's tweet from nine hours ago, and I do somewhat agree with that tweet, I know not everybody will because everyone's going to have a different perspective on the entire situation. But what he really says is that this is not a bailout, which I do agree with. This is not a government bailout because the difference is that the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and the Treasury Department are not bailing out Silicon Valley Bank or Signature Bank. They are bailing out the depositor. And yes, the argument that FDIC insurance should only be capping out at 250000 and nothing over that is valid. I agree. Anything over that would seem as a bailout. But think about that for a second of what the consequences might be if the insurance were to cap out at 250000 and everything on top of that was subject to failure, right? Put yourself in those shoes. Put yourself in that situation, right? If you're running a business, you know, if you're not even running a business, if you just have cash or deposits in a bank and that bank were to fail and you've got deposits well over $250,000, would you or would you not want the government to step in making sure those deposits are safe and they are made whole? Ask yourself the simple question, right? Because my perspective is coming from the fact that companies have to pay employees, employees have families, and if employees start losing their jobs, that is a much bigger unfortunate tragedy and event than anything else, right? So that's the perspective that I'm taking. And I agree, the government is not bailing out um, Silicon Valley Bank, but instead it's making sure the depositors are made whole. So let me know down in the comment section below, what do you think? And here the shareholders and bondholders have been wiped out. As we discussed earlier, there's been three different parties affected, right? Investors, which are stockholders and bondholders, customers, which are companies whose deposits have now been made whole. And third is other regional banks. Um, there is going to be some contagion. There is going to be still some fear and people are going to be moving money around regardless of what the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department and FDIC are doing. There is still going to be some fear. But the at the end of the day, we know that the banking system is built on trust and it is not going to fail, uh, you know, considering that the, that the government is almost always going to step in. So as you'll notice in that tweet, uh, Bill Ackman goes on further by saying that the government did the right thing. This was not a bailout in any form. The people who screwed up will bear the consequences. The investors who didn't adequately oversee their banks will be zeroed out and the bondholders will suffer a similar fate. And importantly, our government sent a message that depositors can trust the banking system. Without this confidence, we are left with three or possibly four too big to fail banks where the taxpayer is explicitly on the hook and our national system of community and regional bank is toast. So again, I mentioned this during our live stream that it is really important for banks to kind of restore the government for, for the government to restore the trust of the people and make sure the banking system is functioning well, right? That is, the, that is kind of like what, what I'm keying in on, right? The depositors being made whole is a whole point of why I believe that the financial sector is, is going to perform well, considering that there's so much fear and so much volatility coming on the downside. If the government had not stepped in, XLF would not have been an opportunity in my opinion. But because the government's starting to step in and they are kind of putting that backstop on depositors, I do think that XLF does offer an opportunity because if you take a look at 
the financial sector select sector uh, spider fund uh, of course over 30,000 uh, million right that's going to be roughly i think 30 billion dollars in assets under management um, and the gross expense ratio is 0.1% right so it's incredibly low and if you come down to some of the holdings let's just go over the p ratio first price to earnings ratio right now it's trading at 11.93 so it's actually really really low and price to books trading at 1.48 and estimated 3 to 5 year eps growth rate at 9.5% so expected earnings growth is expected to be very very strong and if you come down to the holdings for this fund we've got nothing but quality and top top tier banks we got berkshire hathaway uh that's 15 percent of the weight we got jp morgan uh that's up almost 11 percent. then we got bank of america under six percent we got wells fargo at 4.3 morgan stanley 3.3 goldman sachs at over three percent s p global analytics company three percent american express blackrock and citigroup none of which I, I think there's going to be any risk related to. Yes, um, they're all down and they're all underwater on their bond portfolio, but as a percentage of their total assets, it's really not that big of a deal for these companies. And a lot of them on the list right now are considered to be systemically important banks, SIBs, meaning that if they were to fail, it's going to cause a financial crisis. So in other words, they are going to really be protected. Of course, you know, I'm not I'm not saying that just because they're protected, just because the government's stepping in, just because the government's kind of putting their foot down, that means they can all go rogue and they can continue to do whatever they want. I don't I'm not saying that. And even Bill Ackman kind of agrees to the fact that, you know, not being able to run a bank is really damaging because bank board and management have received a massive wake-up call. Bank being a director and CEO of a bank that fails is no fun. Years of litigation, regulatory investigations, personal liability, potential civil and criminal charges, and an enormous reputational damage as well. So bottom line is, I think the fact that the government stepped in and we are seeing a little bit more stability in the banking sector. The sell-off that we saw last week in XLF, and it was down almost 9%, and pre-market, it's down another 1.85%. I would be a lot more interested in taking a stab at this at 29.50. So this right here is going to be that support that I'm going to be watching. And I think, in my opinion, that's going to be a very good level to watch for XLF. We've got a nice dividend yield of over 2% and some potential capital appreciation in the tune of 23, 25, even as much as 30% over the course of this year as this sort of dies down, as the dust settles. And we do see some more stability in this sector. Another one to consider is going to be FAS. It's going to be more for the leveraged folks out there. FAS was down a little bit over 24% last week and uh, definitely selling off even more pre-market because it's leveraged. Be careful. Do your due diligence. Again, not sharing any personal financial investment advice here, but just make sure that you do your due diligence and your research. I've got some alerts going off here. So markets are definitely... Uh, rolling over a little bit with SPY down 23 basis points and the Dow Jones also down about half a percent pre-market. But really, FAS could be the next potential opportunity, X FAS and XLF put together because of the lot of the fear that we're seeing. And of course, having that top tier banks as the money starts to also consolidate a little bit towards those big four. Um, in my opinion, that, that could be an opportunity to look into. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And I know there's going to be a lot of back and forth between whether this was a government bailout or not. In my opinion, it wasn't. It was simply making sure the depositors are made whole. And it's really all about the company's uh, you know, deposits, making sure that they are safe and the employees that work for them. Don't think of it as you know government kind of bailing out this bank or the people who took bad decisions. But I'm thinking of it in a way that by this government uh, putting their foot down, it's it's making sure that people, the working class, the middle class people in the U.S. that are working for these companies are going to be able to keep their jobs, they're going to be able to make payroll, and they're going to be able to make, meet their family needs as well. So that's how I'm looking at it, but let me know down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe, and the link to our Discord Patreon is going to be down below. So always happy investing, and I'll see you all in the next video.